Hi everyone! Recently, several new sample models for characters from Roblox have been added to Cascada. In the next couple of videos, I want to show you how you can use these new characters. In this video, I'm going to go into the details of the R15 model. I'll also show you a couple of difficulties that we faced while creating the rig. Specifically, I'll show you what to do when the arms joints do not match with the mesh. If this fix is exactly why you're watching this video, then feel free to use the timecodes in the description to skip to the needed part. Otherwise, I'll be guiding you through the whole process of creating a rig for this model. To make this more fun for myself, I'll be creating each element manually, without the use of the quick rigging tool. I will speed up some parts of the video, but otherwise we'll try to keep it as detailed as possible. I hope this helps, especially for those of you who work with non-standard rigs. And before we begin, I wanted to thank each and every one of you who watches our videos, likes them, and subscribes to our channel. It means a lot. And now, let's get started. Here is my character. I will start the rig creation from the middle section. Here is the joint. When I move this joint, the entire character moves. This character also has this joint. This will move the entire body. But I won't be using it for the rig. As you can see, the torso joint has some children. Here we have the main body, the arms, and then the legs. You can see the right and leg upper legs. Now I'm selecting lower torso and then selecting upper torso as a child. This way, the rig will be created towards the back. Now we're creating the rig controllers. For the direction axis, I choose the axis Z. This element I've created is quite small in size. You can always just edit it. And first of all, I'll edit the box controller. I'm selecting the box controller and I'm going to enlarge it by using scaling. Now you can also make the collision capsule bigger. But in our situation, it can be a little tricky. That is because the pelvic joint is very small and the collision capsule cannot be too small. I will get back to this element in the future, so for now, I'm just going to hide it. We'll see if I can avoid using this element and if the collision capsule inside the character's body is going to be enough. Now I can also make the rigid body bigger. Rigid bodies and collision capsules are two different things responsible for different functionality. A rigid body is responsible for the weight distribution. While collision capsule is responsible for collisions and clashes. However, rigid bodies also have effect on character's physics. That's why now I'm moving the solid body closer to the character's mesh. I also need to add the weight of this body part. An average human torso is about 10 kilograms. And now the first rig element is ready. Let's move forward. Now I'm selecting the back joint and I'm selecting the head as the direction, adding the rig elements. Another thing here, I want to move the rotation controllers forward. This is going to make it easier for me to use them. I'm also trying to position them at different heights. In complex poses, this makes it easier for me to distinguish which controller is responsible for which action. As you can see, it's a lot easier to adjust the collision capsule in the main body. I'm roughly trying to align the collision capsule with the character size. This is an approximation and we won't be able to exactly match them. I'm trying to align them as close as possible. I'm also making the box controller bigger for my convenience. Same goes for the rigid body. As you can tell, for this character, the rigid bodies are going to be slightly squished on the side. As for the weight, I'm going to put 7. I'm approximating this number. I know that the heaviest part is the torso. Since I put 10 for the torso, I'm making the upper body slightly lighter. Next, moving on to the head joint. 
you can see that the head joint is tiny. That's why the rig element is also small. And I'm going to edit it. As usual, we're starting with the box controller. I'm also going to move it up to a more middle position. This positioning will help me when I'll be dealing with the head rotation. This is simply more convenient for me. And now I can move the head point. Since this is the last point in our chain, I can easily move it to any position that I want to. I'm also moving the collision capsule and trying to match its size to the character's head. Moving on to the rigid body, to quickly adjust these numbers, I'm simply scrolling on my mouse. I personally prefer to move the head rotation point closer to the character's nose. I do this because it's easier for me to follow the head's rotation in the future. Finally, don't forget to add the head's weight. I'll put approximately 5 kilograms. Now I'm moving on to the next step and I'm going to create controllers for the character's arms. Giving you a heads up, it's not going to be an easy task. I even had to redo everything. I'm going to give you more details at the end of the video. In short, the issue is going to be with the arm bend. For instance, right now I'm making a hinge elbow connection. But you can see that right now the elbow controller is looking on the side and not in the right direction. This means that the arm is not going to be bending in the direction that I need it to. And I will address this later in the video. As of now, I'll just keep moving forward. For now, let's focus on the legs. Here, you can see me creating rig controllers for the leg joints. Now, in order to create a bend in the knee, I need to select these points and select Union to Hinge in Hinge Actions. Now, we see the bend axis and the knee direction controller. It is facing forward, which is the correct direction. Here, I want to edit the foot. First, I'll move the directions controller closer to the character's meshes. This will make it easier for me to use this point as a fulcrum point. I also want to move the additional point. To shift it exactly relative to the directions point, I will just copy the position of the direction point, paste it to the additional point, and then move the additional point. Here, I'm editing the collision capsule. I'm making it larger, but also keeping it within the character's feet. And I'm also editing the box controller. Similarly, I'm editing the solid body. For the foot's mass, I'm selecting 3 kilograms. This is again a simple estimate. I also want to add additional points in the foot for my convenience. I'm selecting the rig elements of the foot, then I go to point controller, then press add. Once the additional point is created, you can move it around. I want to put it on the side of the foot. This way I'll be able to use it as a pivoting point and rotate the foot around it when needed. In the same way, I'm creating another additional point. This one will be on the opposite side of the foot and another additional point will go on the rear side of the foot. This way, a foot has enough fulcrum points and also rotating points. Now I'm going back up to quickly edit the leg elements. Same thing, we're working with collision capsules, mass, and the usual stuff. For the shins, I'll put about 6 kilograms. Now, this might be too much or too little. I will be able to determine that once I look at the center of mass. As of now, the character's center of mass is somewhere in the torso, which is exactly where we want it to be. Same thing with the hips and thighs. It should be heavier than the hips, so I'll put it at 7 kilograms. Now I will mirror the first leg to create the rig elements on the second leg. Select all the rig elements on the first leg, 
You can do it by double-clicking the parent element. Now, go to the Mirror tab. It's very important to select the right titles here. These titles should be the exact same ones as used for your character's joints. Now click Create Mirror Object. And just like that, we have rig elements for both legs. Checking the center of mass, it's still in the torso, which is good. Overall, the rig is ready. And I'm going to go back to the animation mode to test it. As you can see, when I start moving the arms, something is off. I'm doing more checks here, and it looks like the issue is in the rotation in the elbow. It might be that the elbow rotator is pointed at the wrong direction. When I go to the local mode and do a simple rotation, now this way you can see that the bend in the elbow is happening inwards. And the elbow controller's direction is also pointed in the wrong way. Another detail that I notice is the mesh. We definitely don't want our meshes to look this way. So, let's figure out what the issue is. Now, the underlying theme here is that the arms and legs bends in Cascada are based on a hinges system. Now, let's take a look at this example. Let's take this element with hinges in the middle. And these are our joints. When I'm rotating the bottom joint, it rotates around the hinge in the middle. This works pretty much as though if we had a puppet. Now these joints represent the joints of our character. Now the issue is that the axis of the character's joints bent does not correspond with the axis around which we want to rotate the hand. Now in Cascada, the axis of rotation is determined automatically based on the angle between the joints. In our case, this is the angle. That's why that's the axis that the rigging tools are creating. And the arms are going to be rotating around this axis when we create the hinges connection. That's what it looks like. Now when we look at the meshes, we realize this is not what we want. Back to our character. What can we do? I could move all the arms points relative to the joints so that the elbow direction controller faces backwards. And here is the result. Here is how I can move the arms. Elbows are bending correctly. But there is a slight issue when I'm trying to rotate the arm from the shoulder. As you can see, the pivot of the rotation is kind of outside of the character. While this is a good option, it's not exactly what I'm looking to do. We can also do something else. I can also manually move the hinge connection points. I'm moving them to where I think is the correct position. And in this case, I won't be able to use the elbow direction controller. Let's compare the two options. Here, I have the elbow directions controller. I really enjoy it for the elbow controls. However, I don't like the pivoting point in the shoulder. And it can also affect some of the joints when rotating, which is not ideal for me. In the second rig, I don't have the elbow directions controller. However, the joints are not going to be altered in any way and I like the way the arm is rotating. I personally prefer the second option. This is a fairly simple rig, so I'll be able to control it without the elbow directions controller. This rig works for my purposes. I can still control the arms, it's fairly simple, and I'm enjoying the way it looks. In the Cascada templates, you'll be able to find a rig with this character. It is not exactly identical to mine, but it has very similar structure and you can also see that the elbow direction controller is not there. Next, I'll try to do a couple of animations with this character. If you'd like to see the next video, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
and also turn on the notifications and we'll make sure to show you the next stage.